Felix here, and welcome to this pre-market live. Four minutes late, for which I apologize. I was uh, experiencing some interesting things with YouTube today. I wasn't able to upload videos and that sort of thing, but they seem to have fixed it, so brilliant. Uh, thank you, YouTube, for that. And um, we've got tons, literally tons happening. Like, I don't even know where to start with the news today. That's how much is happening today. And you are thinking, get to it, Felix. Well, as always, this is not financial advice. This is the most exciting part of this video, by the way. This is hopefully entertainment and education, which is our goal here. And what have we got? We've got massive, massive NEO news. I've just finished a video on that, but I'll tell you what it is first. Basically, the NEO Hong Kong listing isn't the secondary listing we thought it was. It's actually a primary listing, and I'll explain that in a moment. We do, of course, have um, also lots to talk about. Near USA hiring some serious people, uh, which is definitely very, very interesting. We've got Bank of America, I believe, coming out saying that you and me, the dumb money, that's what Wall Street calls us, we're the dumb money, they're the smart money, and we try to do something about that on this channel. One of the ways you can make yourself smarter is by downloading Goldman Sachs' top 50 high-dividend growth stocks that they say are undervalued. Full list is at felixfrenzorg slash 50, felixfrenzorg slash 50, and it's completely free. So that's how we make ourselves less dumb. I don't think any of you are dumb, by the way. I think we have the smartest community on YouTube, but that's literally what, what Wall Street calls us. And they're basically saying, look, retail investors are buying the dip more than they have in the past. And A, that's good for retail investors because provided they're buying smart stocks, and I, I hope so, they will make more money and they come out of this, you know, smelling of roses. And secondly, generally speaking, periods where retail money is flown into the market, we've seen substantial uptake in the market afterwards. So you normally get get a really nice boom uh, coming coming after after the crisis. So that's definitely uh, useful. The Dow is up. And let me just load it up for you here quite significantly, which by the way, that is a dumb index. Why? Because it's weighted by a nominal share price. They're really hard to believe, but it really is. So let me show you that here. This is Dow's up 1.7%, Nasdaq up 2.2%, Russell up 51.5%. Why? The IAE, or is it IEA? Never quite sure. Have said that there is uh, basically more oil available. And let me pull that up here. So the IEA said it, it could release more oil. Brent crude and WTI are down more than 2%. Uh, so there are movements here on the part of the IEA saying, look, we might be able to do something about these hideous oil prices. We are now at 122. They were at about 130 earlier today. We had 140 two days ago. So despite the US putting that sanction in a sense, they're basically saying we're no longer going to buy Russian oil and gas. That doesn't have a huge impact, by the way. The US does not buy a great deal of Russian oil and gas. They buy a bit, but not massive amounts. It's Europe that buys massive amounts, and Europe is trying to figure out how to get their hands on alternative supply before cutting off their energy lifeline, because otherwise industrial output would completely you know, uh, go kaput. By the way, I can't see the live chat. I don't know why um, YouTube today is an interesting place. What I'll try and do is on my phone, I load up this same video, and then I might be able to see their comments looking at the phone. We've done that before. Things happen sometimes. You sometimes think, you know, when you are somebody like, here we are, see, me watching myself. Uh, how narcissistic is that? Brilliant. Um, uh, are we very dark? We are a bit. Yeah, you know what? The, the room, the lighting in here is natural. And, and what happens with natural lighting is that sometimes it's very sunny here and then you get dark and then you get bright and it sort of moves around a little bit plus the camera does its thing. So I'm a little bit, yeah, spookily lit. I get that. Uh, we will see if we can do something about that. I haven't got a light in front of me here, which, I, which is what I normally do. But then that upsets my eyes and it's a long story, but you asked the question. So I will, I will occasionally peek at the live chat here U.S. imports 7.9% of oil from Russia, says George. George, thank you very much. You are full of wisdom. Okay, that is substantial. It's not quite the 50% that Europe buys, but yeah, very interesting. Thank you very much for saying that. Um, Philip says, well, the amount of red in my portfolio must indicate I may not be the smartest investor. 
No, I, I don't agree with you on that one, Philip. I think you are actually very smart investor. And I know that because you are in my community and you are a student, uh, which I truly appreciate. And I think is what makes the community so fantastic, people like you, Philip, is the market is cyclical. And you have to buy the most when the market is red. That's that's the hard thing. And that's what's hard to get your head around. And that's what I, I teach in our financial freedom program here. Uh, that's really, you know, market psychology is so, so, so very important. But before we jump into any of that kind of esoteric conversation, let's have a quick look at, well, you probably want to see the pre-market and then I'll talk to you about NEO because what's happening with NEO will blow your mind. It really will. But let me just show you the, the pre-market extended hours here. Coinbase is flying for once. Square up 5.8%. We're seeing a nice recovery here in tech stocks. E-hang up, Etsy up, everything up 3, 4, 5%. The banks are up. JP Morgan's up. QQQ up 2.6% pre-market. Tesla at 843. It's like being at the races, isn't it? Everything is green with the exception of the volatility index. And you know what that means? Money. It means money for us options traders and I'm excited about it. I love that the volatility always comes down. It always does. We've got all these options trades open here. Um, I don't know how many, 15, 20 maybe even, and we're going to make loads of money. Not because the stock price moves, just because the volatility comes down. We can close out of these trades at a bigger profit. So, so far, 5,444 US dollars this year. That doesn't include most of February. It includes probably the first six weeks of the year of trading only, because I don't count these paper profits as real profits until we closed out of the position. So to get your hands on that, well, learn options trading. And I genuinely think you have to be taught by somebody. I was fortunate enough to be taught by somebody who was a very, very good options trader. And someone asked me last week, uh, what's the what's a great book to read on options trading? I've never read a book on options trading. Uh, I think it's rather tedious. I, I think really a, you need to get the guidance beyond the theory because the theory only tells you so much. And then you need to actually practice. And by me giving you access to my life traits, completely unedited, the full hour that I do over a week, I do about one hour a week. So six weeks of one hour, 5,444 US dollars. That's about $800 an hour earned for that. That's not, not a bad wage for the hour, is it? We're going to get that up, but that's not, not a bad start. So that's what I would suggest, really. You've got to find somebody. It can't be me. It doesn't have to be me who, who basically shows you the ropes and, and gives you the experience because there are lots of option trades that on paper look very, very good. I mean, buying call options, it seems nothing wrong with it, right? If you learn the theory, but it's a terrible idea uh, because you are always overpaying and you're therefore very, very likely to lose money. And the guy on the other side is very likely to make money. So which side do you want to be on, the winning or the losing? Well, uh, your call. But Write down that coupon code here, multiply. That is the price that's going to go up off this program by $100 on Monday. So uh, come to a decision here. That's basically what I would encourage you to do. And literally, I'd be super, super happy if you go somewhere else and learn options because I'd just be happy more people make more money. Can you see the lighting changing here? Uh, bizarre, isn't it? So now it's looking a little bit less uh, strange here. And could you give us your take on coin, says Rene, uh, very gladly. And Chris says, did you hit the like button? Maybe that's why the lighting is funny. So thank you very much for the likes. We are missing about 100 likes so far. Got about 100 people here on the edge going, mm, is that guy going to deliver? Maybe he will, maybe he won't. I, I hope you stick around. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. There is a massive piece of news here, and I've literally just done a full video on that. But as you're live with me, I'm going to run you a little bit through this as I'm messing up my, my notes here. The Hong Kong listing that we all think is a secondary listing. And let me just explain what that means. So the Hong Kong listing, they tried for a primary listing that did, seemed not to work. And then that was last summer. And now they've gone for a secondary listing starting tomorrow. And we were all like, well, that's nice, but that still depends on the New York listing. So if New York gets delisted, we're still screwed. And I said, well, maybe maybe the regulator could could just step in and then convert it and, and be, be nice to Neo. And then I found an article on just today, and the video came out straight after this. You could watch the full thing. But the article basically says there are new Hong Kong listing rules that came in in December. And I had not read about this. This was kind of like a quiet thing. And in that listing rule, it says you can convert your secondary listing to a primary listing in three scenarios. Now, the one that we care about is if you get delisted in your overseas listing, your Hong Kong secondary listing will automatically, yes, automatically become a primary listing. 
So this is a primary listing for all intents and purposes. If there is ever a delisting event in New York, the Hong Kong listing becomes a primary listing. So our plan B is intact. And now we can see why did Neo move from primary to secondary? Because it's the same thing for the one reason they want to be listed in, in, in Hong Kong for. So that is very, very good news. I don't think people realize that yet. I'll put out that video afterwards. I would be super thrilled if you would share it with the world because people don't know this and I give you all the resources and where the information comes from. This is not something I've cooked up. Uh, the information comes from Scadden Arps, which is a very, very highly respected US law firm. And uh, so watch out for that video later. But that's definitely something I am I'm very, very pleased about. Very, very pleased about. So I'm going to have to check the comments again here because they're not working on my screen. A huge sale on Estee Lauder, says Lonnie Kidd. Well, I, I'm, 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 I'm happily buying Estee Lauder. How much money do you use as trading caps and capital, says Axel. All right, let me, let me show you that. So I'm at the moment at the highest point for the year of buying power that I use. So I was using in January about $8,000 of buying power, which is sort of a strange term for margin that Think or Swim has. Uh, that's now gone up. Why? Because the volatility has shot up so much that, and let me show you that, that I know... the. This is a, the most profitable time or a much more profitable time to make, to make money with options than it was a couple of weeks back. So the Ukraine crisis made this a very profitable time to, to sell options. And therefore, I... Um, okay, can you see this here? So basically, the VIX is going in that direction. The higher it goes, the more money we make by selling options and the more money you lose by buying options. So therefore, I'm, I'm ramping up my options trading beyond what I would ordinarily do. When we go back to these levels of volatility, 14 range, I'm going to trade a lot less options. So there is that to it, but you need to really understand that. But as we keep going up, it, it's wonderful. And then we keep having these, these drops, right? These wonderful drops here. Here, we had some there, and we're getting another nice one again today, and that is, is harvest season. So that's when you, when you can close out of trades early and you can make money that is, is uh, you know, not just 80% profit, but actually gets more profitable than that. And that's really the smart thing with, with options. So to give you one idea of a, of a trade, if you open up Option Strat, it's a brilliant platform. So really, really simple trade, a short put. Say you're running a short put on SoFi. I've actually got one at 750, which is pretty fantastic. And that's making me 25% money or so. Okay, this here is how you where you make money. And this might be a bit confusing, but implied volatility is super high. When volatility goes up, the trade becomes risky. You see that? But as volatility is 100% and historically also at about 100%, it's going to go down. And it means I make the maximum profit. I don't have to wait till the end. I could actually close out very much, much earlier. And that's the important part to understand with, with options trading, how that, how that functions, how that interacts. That's really, really what's important. And I apologize for my lighting here today. It's a bit bonkers, isn't it? It's kind of like the lighting gods are not with us today. But we are live on YouTube. And literally yesterday was a bit of a struggle to get videos up. So I'm very, very grateful for that already. Like, let me check. Um, I'm, I'm not literally, you know, texting with somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm reading your comments. Does the Hong Kong listing uh, push up prices in the U.S. market? Now, um, and, and Joachim says it's very good news. I think it is. I thank you, Joachim. I appreciate that. And I, I'd love it if you shared that uh, with uh, the finance community that you're part of. Now, the, okay. The, I have also gone through that in the video. I'm not going to take you through the full maths here because it'll, it'll just be a bit tedious. But essentially, about 23% of float will be in Hong Kong. About 77% will be in New York. And that's actually quite a lot in Hong Kong, like from a percentage point of view. So what it means is that, yeah, there will be some new money coming in. There'll be some tracker funds. There'll be some local investors. There'll be some you know, local Chinese and Asian funds going in, into, into NEO. That'll create some extra demand. And secondly... The 23% float removed also does remove some shares available for lending. So it might also have a moderate impact on the cost of borrowing shares for shorting. So that's definitely a, a, a good one. Um, Sammy, okay, brilliant. Uh, I think um, Cheryl's in touch with you to, to book a call with you. And um, we you can book calls with us. Uh, what does that mean? Well, 
If you have questions on the programs, you're thinking, I've got my target, this is what I want to do, but I'm not 100% sure. Should I start with options or should I start by really understanding you know, how to buy, buy great stocks, how to put a value on stocks, how to really understand the psychology of the market? What is the sweet spot for me to get me to my targets first, quicker? Then go to Felix Friends on org slash call and ask us for a call and we'll very, very honestly uh, I answer that. And we might say to you, hey, this isn't for you. Seriously, I do that. I actually talk people out of buying things. And why do I do that? Because I want happy people. I want people who are getting a great result and we're getting that and I appreciate some... These are just two testimonials from the last 15 hours, 15 hours, 14 hours ago. And, and uh, people are so fantastic and kind and intelligent in our community. Nina, who has a big, big, big finance background, uh, lots of um, experience in, in, in the investing business. He says, Felix is giving a, a thoughtful stock market educator. He's a true asset manager. He understands all the mistakes and psychological weaknesses that the average investor experiences. He also brings humor. Well, I do try. Uh, you definitely will improve your understanding of investing and what is right for your goals. Follow Felix and you are sure to grow. Thank you very much for that, Nina. Much appreciated. Or oh, Aaron here saying, very genuine and educating and helping members create long-lasting wealth. Easy to understand, lifelong access, which is great. He presents with solid life experience, expertise, daily updates. I learned a lot and I've shared the learning with my family and recommended it to friends. And that's the, the biggest compliment that I can get is that you recommend and share what you, what you see here, what you see in our Patreon, what you see in our um, course community. And the, honestly, the more people we can reach, the more people we can get onto building that lasting wealth and making more passive income with options trading and so on, uh, the happy I am. That's that's my, my my mission here is to get you to financial freedom. So huge appreciation for, for all of that. Uh, one very small step you can take if you just want to take a small step is to get your hands on our stock portfolio tracker. Put your portfolio in here and it pulls up live, not just how much money you make, but it pulls up the life financial indicator. So your gross margins, your ROE, your insider ownership, your your short ratios, all that kind of stuff. And then what I would do is click on file, make a copy, and then you have your own sheet. It still functions, still puts the data in. And then what you can say is say, okay, let's make some columns here for March 22, uh, gross profit margin. Yeah gross margin, and then write it down. Write down what it was. It was 19%, it was you know 25% for this stock and so on. And then for your portfolio, you have a historic track record of the key indicators and the key reasons why you bought a stock. And then as those numbers change, or as the stock price changes, you know what you're doing. And that's super, super important to have that confidence and know I've anchored the individual fundamental the points that made you buy that stock. And the way you can get your hands on that is go to felixfriends.org slash Patreon down below. It's like 20 cents a day. Uh, join us for the year. You get an extra month off as well. And of course, you get access to the whole live chat group with all these super, super smart people and my research. And you can ask me questions and everything else as well. So uh, I look forward to seeing you on there. Now, hit the like button, says Renee. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Nazi says, I've recommended a service member to your special program for troops. Will you get a study, buddy? I did see your email, Nazi. It was literally the next one I was about to answer. I plowed through about 50 emails in the last 24 hours, and I, I will always reply every single one of you. Uh, if we have a program for troops, so for people in the armed forces or, or veterans, we have a completely free program. It's called Financial Freedom for Heroes. Simply go to the website, go to felixfriends.org down below, and you will see at the top of the page a, a button for for um, troops, basically. And you can sign up for that. Uh, we don't do study buddies for that because we want to keep that in the vet and uh, active service member community. And that is a standalone program that basically teaches those people who have served and are serving to get to financial freedom. It's completely free. I would normally charge for that. Uh, civilians pay, but those guys and, and, and girls who have uh, dedicated their, their lives or part of their lives to service do not. And that's just one of the things we, we do here because I think they're worth supporting and I think they are getting a little bit screwed. I think they get targeted by the financial industry and not the good end of it, but the bad end of it who sell them all sorts of nonsensical investment products and they don't quite realize that actually 
while you are in the US military, you do get a fairly decent, or any other Western military for that reason, you get a fairly decent income. You also get a pension plan. If you invested that early on and you knew what you were doing, you would come out of it with, with financial freedom in, in pretty much in place. And that's what I want to make sure people people do. So uh, that's on the website. Just go to goatacademy.org or felixfriends.org. It takes you to the same page. And then um, as this loads here, at, at, at uh, demonstration speed. At the top here is a link, veterans and troops. So go on that and you join a fantastic community of exactly that, veterans and troops. So we wanna just want to do, I wanted to do a little bit here to support uh, those guys and girls. Rob Jett is asking, did Neo list in Hong Kong? Tomorrow, Rob, tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the listing day. I'm sure we'll be covering that during the day. Uh, what else has happened today? Well, 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 um, the commodity market's still going bonkers. If you watched my video on that yesterday, absolutely uh, bat, you know, uh, S-C-H-I-T crazy. If, if I swear I get penalized by YouTube and they've been very, very kind to me today. Well, their system wasn't working, but they fixed it. So thanks for them. So we're seeing lots of retail in investors basically buying the dip while some institutions are selling out of stocks while I'm here kind of crazily lit, right? It's sort of to make, me, make myself look more spooky. I'm not quite sure why. There's also a golden retriever sleeping behind me somewhere. I don't think you can see him though, but I can hear him grunting. Second piece of news, if you are into NEO, NEO has just put a job ad out 21 hours ago for the head of retail real estate. Retail real estate. Is that exciting or is that exciting? That's exciting. Why is that exciting? Because the head of retail real estate, you'll be responsible for the real estate needed for all end user infrastructure in the US, included but not limited to retail and charging. And retail is neo houses and neo spaces. Neo spaces are basically smaller versions of the neo house without the playpen. And you don't hire somebody to do that unless you have a fairly imminent plan. Because, okay, to establish infrastructure right takes some time because you need to basically um look for sites look for power electricity engineers maintenance companies get local permits all that stuff it takes a while i get that but retail you basically go and talk to a local realtor and say hey i want a showroom and then they show you 10 showrooms and then you go and, and, and rent one that's as hard as that gets right so this to me means the U the us launch is 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 coming it's coming pretty soon and i think we'll be surprised by the speed at which neo rolls this out so i'll, I'll more, more on that later um so Lots of questions here. I Basically, what we are seeing is uh, Russia is trying to fight back on the sanctions. They're not particularly happy with that, which means that it's hurting. And they are banning and restricting some exports and some imports. So which ones? Let me see if I can see which ones here. And no, we don't actually. It doesn't seem to say here which ones they are. It'd be interesting to see which they are. And of course, if he pulls gas from Europe, he hurts Europe, but he also stops receiving billions every day from Europe. So you can't really see him. I can't really see him doing that. I think he just wants to threaten it. And this is a rather menacing looking picture of, of, of the Vlad. So be interesting to see what happens there, whether this will affect raw material prices even more. We're talking aluminium, we're talking nickel, we're talking lithium, we're talking you know neon, all these kind of core things, especially for the EV sector, very, very important and could potentially, well, it, they'll definitely put a squeeze on margins, which is why I like tracking margins. I'm going to be watching like a hawk the margins of the major EV car and car companies over the next few quarters to see what's really going on there. Um, Okay, let me just see if I missed any calls here. Sorry, I, I can't see the, the live stream on the on the screen at the moment. So I'm using my phone. So I know I'm looking like a, like like I'm you know chatting with a friend here while I'm alive. That's not not the intention. Bank of America thinks GDP will shrink. Well, I think GDP growth will shrink. I'm not sure that GDP will shrink. GDP shrinking would be a recession, at least if it happens for uh, uh, two consecutive quarters. So the inflation that we're going to get is going to cause, you know, say in, in, in Europe, uh, they say the ECB said if the oil price goes up 10%, that shaves off, I think it was 0.4% of growth max. So the oil price has gone up a hell of a lot more than that. So we might see a very, very substantial reduction in GDP growth. But at the moment, GDP growth is very strong. The labor market numbers are very, very strong in the US. So 
in a sense, that's now suddenly a good thing. What we were really disliking before was like this really strong labor market was bad for the tech market is now suddenly a good thing. Uh, we are getting some numbers today at 11 o'clock on job openings and, and, and so on. Be interesting to watch that. And yeah, you're seeing crude stocks uh, probably falling very substantially because who wouldn't be selling crude at these prices? And then tomorrow we're going to get core inflation numbers, but they will not really take into account the Ukraine stuff properly yet so i think we're gonna have to wait a little bit for that and then tomorrow we're also getting the core the job jobless numbers again so you want actually tomorrow a strong job market for the first time because the fed has been tapered back essentially in terms of its power uh, because they're not going to be as aggressive as they said they were going to be because of the ukraine so it's it's a complex world inflation and it's just gotten a, a heck of a lot more more complex here let me just see if i miss, miss some here um, Mohammed, thanks very much. Yes, Neo stock code is indeed 9866. And Danzo just bought 20 boxes of his wheat-based cereals. Yeah, that's very, very, very good idea. I think stockpiling is what, what makes everything better. <laughs> uh, but why, why is he doing that? Because let me show you the wheat prices. The wheat price is this. It's gone from 850 in Feb to now 1,229. So yeah, your breakfast cereals might go up in price uh, for sure. I mean, a lot of things will. You know, soy soy prices will go up. So, uh, but look at these palladium, platinum. They all come from Russia, right? Gold, Russia, big gold uh, producer, exporter, and also now a, a a gold buyer. So they're basically rather than buying foreign currency as they would have done in the past, they're buying gold. And um, oil prices have come down down a little. They were at one twenty nine earlier in the day. We're up to one forty yesterday because the I. AE or IEA, I'm never quite sure which way around that acronym is, are uh, basically saying we could increase output. So the volatility is down 6% today, which means it's reaping seasons for us options traders, the market recovering very nicely here. And we'll be able to possibly close some out of some of our trades early with near maximum profit. And that's the marvelous thing with, with options is that, you know, when volatility goes up, this has happened, what happens to your stock. Your options straight when it goes down, it, this is what happens. So this is what we're seeing at the moment. We're basically seeing falling volatility, which makes our trades more profitable. So to learn more about that, come and join our master options program. Here it is, felixfriends.org slash options. 47% off coupon and the coupon code is multiply. And that is as in multiply your income, your passive income with options or multiply your wealth with our financial freedom program, which basically teaches you how to build long lasting wealth through stock investing and how to analyze stocks, how to put values on stock to your own discounted cash flow models, understand the psychology of the markets. Because I think if you watched me for a little while, you're starting to see this is mostly about psychology. This is not about an information edge. We mostly all have the same information. I mean, there's a thing called Google. And the problem is the way we are programmed, right? Do we have a strategy? Do we have a goal? What is your want? Where do you want to go? What, when you, what do you actually want to achieve? Without that, you're just rudderless. And then secondly, you do need to have a fundamental understanding of some economics of what makes a good company, what makes a bad company in terms of fundamentals, which is what we use our stock tracker for. And then you need to really have that plan, that long-term strategy so you can execute it again and again and again and again. And it will get you to really, really tremendous wealth. So that's what our financial freedom program does here. And uh, I encourage you to check it out. Prices for the programs will go up on Monday. Uh, Danza, I think you're roughly right that Russia produces about 50% of the world's palladium and the Ukraine and Russia about 20% of the world's wheat. I think something like that. Yeah, I think I read about a sixth of the world's wheat. Uh, the Ukraine, I understand, also produces something like 80% of the world's neon, which is a strange little gas that isn't just in your fancy little BMW front headlights. It's also used for, for batteries and so on. So lots of stuff like that does come from Russia, which is... Um, yeah, it's it's gonna put a put a squeeze on on the cost here of of manufacturing things. Aluminium prices also in Russia, a major aluminium exporter. We had a chart up here the other day. Let me see if I can. Russia exports. Let me see if I can pull that up again. I think so. Let me show you this here. Uh, this is a nice little website called OEC.world, and you can basically see their exports. So, say for the last year. Uh, you can see what they've exported. Their major exports by value, crude petroleum, refined petroleum, coal, brigades, petroleum, gas, and then iron ore, uh, electricity, copper, precious metals, linite, coke, 
um, not the kind of coke you're thinking of, asphalt mixtures, lead or calcium phosphates, other commodities, raw aluminium, Iron, gold, platinum. I mean, they are just a major, major, because it's such it's such an enormous country. It's like a continent, right? So of course, they've got loads of raw materials. Wheat here, 1.7%. That's a big one. And then, you know, uh, timber and all sorts of stuff. And where is it, is it all going? Well, it's mostly going to Europe. Half of it is going to Europe. The US is about 3.5%. And China is a fairly sizable export destination for them, but it is still mostly Europe. So that is, um, you know, Essentially, if you want to you uh, get rid of Russia as a, as, a, as, a, as a country that's wealthy, you basically need to, need to stop buying petroleum from them, which is what the US has just done. But Europe, who buys most of that, hasn't. So that's really the, the question here is, will they be able to, or are we still financing Putin's war here at the moment? Unfortunately, we still are. Right, let me have another look at the comments here. Uh, uh, I have to use my phone here today. Sorry, guys. Uh, Mohammed says European countries are planning to reduce dependency on Russian energy and that'll help neo sales there. Yeah, I mean, it will make just cars more expensive, petroleum running cars, it'll be more expensive for sure. Um, if the price of oil is going up, why are EV stocks not going up? Because at the same time, what we were just talking about, the input costs for manufacturing EVs are going up massively. Lithium, nickel. I did a video on nickel yesterday. It doesn't sound like the most sexy subject, but I would encourage you to watch it because it is mind-blowing what's happening with, with, with prices there of these raw materials. The nickel price increase alone could add 2,000 US dollars to your average EV battery per car. 2,000 US dollars. So this is not like, oh, it's going to cost a little. No, no, it's, it's really costing significant amounts of money here. So, uh, but yeah, I think in the long run, this will accelerate, accelerate the movement from ICE to EV. I totally agree with you on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put out the Neo breaking news video straight after this, uh, this one. So watch out for that. I think that's definitely worth checking out and understanding that we just got the plan B in place. So, so if you have, if you missed the first part of this video here, uh, check that out. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the full thing here of what uh, the Hong Kong listing rules really say and so on. And I genuinely appreciate you tuning in. Thank you very much. I love you guys. I appreciate you building this community, especially my patrons and course members, not because they are better people than you are if you are not, but they're just contributing so much it's incredible uh, how much support you are giving each other in, in our community so a huge thank you to, for that and i look forward to seeing you same time same place tomorrow and i've got i think three four five maybe videos coming out later today so make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already thanks for tuning in see you on the next one